Hey guys, Coach Sue here with Physique Development, and today we're gonna go over how to take the absolute best check-in photos. Now the reason this is important is it's going to be extremely helpful for the coach to get the best vision of what's going on, and if we have a less than ideal check-in photo, it's harder to truly know what's going on with someone's physique, and it's also something that we wanna be able to make week-to-week -week comparisons, or if we have a transformation, and if we've gotten your permission to post it, we want those photos photos to truly showcase the work that you've put in and for you to see those details in those photos as well. So we're going to talk through some different scenarios of some good, better, best, be able to show some examples of some bad photos or bad situations and then being able to show those good, better, best. Before we get into the four things I want you to think about for photos, you want to make sure that they're taken fasted and in the morning. Fasted meaning that there's no food in your stomach yet and before coffee and water. Now, if you do need some coffee to kickstart some things, you can have some, but I'm talking more so of we don't want to down 100 ounces of water or all this coffee before we take those photos because that can change how you look. Also using the bathroom first if you're able to and make a note to your coach if you normally have a bowel movement before or after those photos just so we have an accurate idea of what all's going on. Taking them in the same place, again for comparison, and around the same time every day, again, for consistency and comparison for the coach to be able to see what all's going on in those photos. So the four things I really want you to keep in mind are going to be the posing, the location, the lighting, and the clothing that you are wearing. So we're gonna pop some examples up on the screen to show you as I talk through some different things that are gonna be that good, better, or best, as well as the things that we really don't wanna see. So what we don't wanna see here, we'll go ahead and start with that, is we wanna make sure we don't have backlighting. So if you're standing in front of a window, making sure that those blinds are closed or if you have blackout blinds, because we don't want all of our lighting coming from behind. We also want to ensure that we have more of a plain background. Now in the good pictures, you'll see it's not a completely blank wall for me, but it is something that there's not too much noise in the background. There's not a mess in the background. There's not things that are distracting that could be cutting into my physique. Whereas in this other video, you're able to see that not only am I having a textured wall behind me, I have a bathtub, the blinds are open. It's very difficult, and especially if you have even more mess behind you, to truly just see your physique. And then again, when it comes to those comparison photos, who wants those photos on the internet when there's all this junk behind you or it's not that great of lighting, but you had an incredible transformation that we wanna really be able to celebrate. The best is going to be if we have natural lighting. Now I understand this is not able to happen for every person. So that is the absolute best situation is to be able to have natural straight on lighting, not from the side, but straight on. But I understand if you take your photos really early in the morning or the location in which you take your photos, it doesn't work for where the lighting is. And that's okay. That's just the best situation that we can have. Better is going to be if we can have a ring light in place. So this is gonna be great if you're in the Midwest specifically and your weather is very wishy-washy. It can't decide what it wants. So one day it might be sunny, the next day it might be overcast. So it might just be easier to have the consistency of the blinds closed and using the ring light. And I know that's what I personally do because again, sometimes I'm taking them before the sun comes up, but also the days really vary here in Ohio. So being able to have that ring light adds in that consistency as a whole. And then that good option is going to be if you don't have a ring light and you don't have natural light, making sure the lights are on in front of you instead of on top of you. So we're going to show an example right now of what it looks like if the lights are on and they're just right on top of me straight down lighting versus being able to see it when the lights are on in front of me and I make sure that I'm standing in a place that I'm not having shadows fall on my physique. Again, we're thinking about what's going to be the easiest for the coach to see and show the clearest view of your physique as a whole. Now that we've gone over the location and the lighting, let's go ahead and take a look at the clothing and the posing. So you could have some of these checked off and others not, and it still not make a great photo because you'll also see me in some of the best 
best lighting, the best location, the best poses, but in clothing that doesn't really help what the coach is trying to see. So if you're wearing high-waisted bottoms or if you wear a bra like this one where I show you, great bra to have on, but it is gonna be something that covers a lot of the physique that we're trying to see. And then the other shirt that I have on, it's covering a lot of my back. And you'll see even if I have on the right bottoms, that if I'm changing my tops or my bras, I have bras that fit very differently and they can cause my physique to look very different as well. So trying to keep that consistency, whether you have, okay, here's underwear and a sports bra, or here's a bikini that is gonna be my check-in bikini, or here are gonna be my board shorts that I check in and just have those sitting to the side. So it's not a mixed bag of what you're wearing because again, clothes are gonna fit you differently and we wanna be able to have that level of consistency across the board. Now within these videos, you see me in posing bottoms because I'm a competitor. So you definitely don't have to show this much or have this little of coverage, but we also don't wanna go the opposite direction of wearing full on shorts or something that's extremely high waisted. At the same time, we do want you as the client to feel as comfortable as possible. So if you don't feel comfortable posing within a sports bra and underwear or in a bikini, vocalize that to your coach so you guys can come to a common ground that works for you. For the bottoms, it is gonna be something that we don't want G-strings on, but you can have posing bottoms on or a bikini or being able to have underwear on. Again, what you feel comfortable in is also extremely important as the client, and that's something we very much so prioritize. So when we're looking at the posing, this is something where we do wanna take into consideration, again, how the coach can see your physique. Now in this example here, you see my arms down by my side. There's also a few where my hair is either in front of me or behind on my back versus pulled over to the side. And you'll see in these photos, the different comparisons of being able to see, oh, I can't see her upper back because her hair is covering it, or I can't really see her midsection. So being able to have your arms up and bent or up in front of you is going to be the best so we can see your full physique. And within the photos, taking a front relaxed, a back relaxed, a side relaxed, and then you can throw in some fun flexing ones if you want to. We love to see the gains or if you have a gym selfie you want to include, you definitely can include those within check-ins. But the big moral of the story is being able to showcase your physique and let the coach see it with the purest light on it and the least distractions so they can truly do their job the best and you can see those changes the absolute best as well. So now I wanna also go into the way that you're taking your photos of a good, better, best for you as well. So good is gonna be using front camera. Front camera is great because you can see yourself in the camera. You make sure your whole body is in the frame instead of something being cut out, which is a very important part of having the whole physique in the frame. Um, and that's gonna be a good option, but I think all of us have seen that the back camera is a lot better than the front camera. So good is going to be using the front camera, um, and that's either taking pictures with the front camera or taking a video with the front camera and doing a screenshot. Now, the better of that is going to be using your back camera in any capacity. So whether it is for photos or taking that video, but we'll go ahead and put that as the back camera in a video while screenshotting. And then the absolute best is going to be your back camera and taking photos. Because again, if you are to see some examples on the screen that we'll place here, there is a large difference in the quality of photo when we're looking at a front camera video and a screenshot versus a front camera camera photo versus a back camera video and screenshot back camera photo. These are all going to be different qualities. And again, it's on that good, better, best. Pro tip that we will have linked in the description box of being able to show the ring light that I have. You can just use a phone stand in general, but the ring light one is great because it's all right there in one spot. And this one did come with a little remote or clicker, which we'll show as well. So you can use that. Now, if you do not have a ring light 
or you have a different one that didn't come with a clicker, no fear. If you have an Apple Watch, you can make some really cool connection between that camera. And as you can see in this video, your watch shows you where you are in frame. So that was the back camera and I was using my Apple Watch as my remote and being able to see exactly where I was, hit it, count down for three and make sure I'm in the stance that I need to. So within this, let's go ahead and go through a quick little checklist for you. And hopefully you're able to take the absolute best check-in photos and showcase your results the absolute best. So what we're looking for here is taking photos at the same location and the same time. We're also looking for fasted photos. So before you've eaten, as well as before you've had too much water or coffee. Also after you use the bathroom, but just note if you don't normally use the bathroom upon waking and that is completely okay. And then we're also taking those four factors into consideration largely. So that is going to be your posing, your clothing, the location, and the lighting. And as you can see, the same exact photos on the same exact day can look so vastly different just by taking those four things into consideration. If you are a male, then feel free to wear boxers or briefs or your board shorts if you are a competitor. If you are a female competitor, it is going to be extremely helpful to have a posing suit. So again, we can have the best comparison because our competition suits are for when we are at the smallest version of ourselves and that's not the version that we live in. So if you want your very own PD posing suit, you can check out the link in the description box and you can use code SUE or code TEAMPD and get 10% off of your very own PD posing suit. Also, if you are a competitor, we do want you to send your routine with your check-in photos. So send the photos, but also send a video of you going through your posing routine. Actually, male or female, send a video of you going through your posing routine so we can do the best job for you. So we cannot wait to see your next check-in photos as your physique continues to develop and we're able to clearly see it, again, because you have the best check-in photos. So we'll catch you in your check-in.